It's Kay. Today, we have five projects for you that are pretty simple, but a little bit time consuming. We're calling this one Black and White and Burlap Christmas. If those aren't your desired colors, you can always change them to fit your aesthetics. So sit back, grab a cup of cocoa, and I hope we inspire you to do some Christmas crafting this weekend. Hey y'all, it's Kay. Let's grab a few materials and we'll make a cute stocking to go on our front door. I bought this cute wooden stocking at Hobby Lobby when it was 50% off and I'm going to use it to make a pattern for today's project. I'm going to be needing some burlap fabric. This one is 46 inches by 72 inches. It came from Walmart and it cost about $7. I'm going to use one of these foam snowflakes that has glitter on top. It has a little jewel in the center. I got these at Hobby Lobby at the end of the year last year, and it was about $9 originally, but I got them at 90% off. I have a couple of cute snowflake ribbons. The one on the left only costs $5 and it's two and a half inches wide. It came from the Dollar General at some point. The one on the right came from Amazon and it was almost $9, y'all. So the one on the left was a really good bargain. I also have these two ribbons in kind of the burlap and the black. One is one and a half inch and it came from Hobby Lobby. The other ribbon is two and a half inches and it came from Michaels. I got them both on sale, of course. I'm going to be using some of this four inch faux fur that I got at Hobby Lobby. This cute wired ribbon that I got at Walmart when they had out their Thanksgiving ribbons. Some shopping bags from my local grocery store that I'm going to recycle. And I'm going to use some Fabri-Tac, some Super Glue Fix All Adhesive from the Dollar Tree, and my hot glue gun. So the first thing I'm going to do is lay out my wooden stocking onto some craft paper, and then I'm just going to trace out a pattern that is larger. I have this small popsicle stick that's about two and a quarter inches, and I just moved it around my stocking, and I just drew a line ever so often, and then I traced it back out. You can see where it was in the middle. I just want to make sure that the top piece is no more than four inches tall. Then I'm just going to cut out my pattern, and once I get it cut out, I'm going to place it down onto my fabric that has been folded in half so that I can cut two pieces at one time. And I'm just going to use straight pins, go around, and I'm going to pin it down. I don't like mine to move while I'm cutting. And so then I'm going in with my fabric scissors and I'm going to cut close to the edge, but not all the way touching the edge and cut out both stockings at the same time. And here you can see two pieces unfolded. Now I'm turning each piece onto the back side, and I'm going to take school glue and apply it to the entire stocking on the back side. And I learned after I started this part and then the next part to start at the edges and make all of the edges first and really tap in that glue. I cut off a piece of the four inch fur just a little bit larger than I needed it. And then I'm going in with my Fabri-Tac and hot glue and I'm going to attach it down to the top. This glue is really thick so I just got a stick out and that helped spread it out. To attach the snowflake to the front, I'm just going to use a combination of my super glue fix all adhesive and my hot glue. Then I again let my stocking lay flat and dry completely. Anytime you're cutting fur, you want to cut it on the back side and not cut through the fur, just cut through the fabric. And then once you turn it over, you can adjust the length on the side. And I wanted that little loop detail at the top. So I'm going in with subdued rope and I'm going to attach it here to the side first before we put everything together. So I'm going to do one whole line down, loop it over and then glue it down to the side of the rope. Then we'll turn it over and we'll start placing our stocking together. I'm going to use my precision tip glue gun as I work my way around and that helps me have a really fine seam. I start at the sides of the top and then I'll fill in the rest of the stocking, but I will leave the top opening. And it's a really good idea to wear finger protectors for this. Once I finish and it's stiffened and dry, I go in and give it a last haircut with my scissors and it stays pretty stiff and doesn't unravel anymore because of the glue we put on there. And now it's time to stuff it and I'm just using my little bags from my grocery store and I'm going to stuff down from the top into the toe and I don't know how many I put in there, probably around 20. But once you get it stuffed as much as you want it, you want to come in with some hot glue again here at the top and I kind of line my burlap 
behind the white of my top piece and that hides all the edges. Make a hanger at the back. I'm going to use some covered floral wire and I'll put it off centered so that my stocking will hang diagonally and I'll just twist that down and secure it with some hot glue as well. For the bow that I made for this piece, I used these five ribbons in this order with the wider snowflakes being on the bottom and then working my way up. I have three two and a half inch ribbons and two one and a half inch ribbons. I used a zip tie to secure them and I made it on my Easy Bow Maker. I also used a piece of covered floral wire in the back underneath the zip tie so that I can attach it to my stocking later. I used four inch loops for the first three ribbons with six inch tails and for the last two ribbons I did smaller loops and smaller tails. Each time I turned one loop up and one loop down and one tail up and one tail down. I did them the opposite direction. And of course every bow needs a lot of fluffing and you need to dovetail any ends or cut off any pieces that need to be adjusted. I had to remove the wrapping from the sides of the floral wire, but once I did that, I shoved it down through the top of that stocking kind of in the corner, turned it over to the back, pulled it through with some pliers, and then I cut off the excess, and I also placed down some glue to hold it in place, and that's pretty much it for this project. Thank you for stopping by our channel today. If you are new here, we hope that you will subscribe by clicking on the little button below. Make sure you ring the bell so you will be notified every time we upload new content. We upload new videos each week offering a variety of DIYs, trash to treasure projects, and tips, tricks, and hacks. We just know you'll find something you like with Crafting Cousins. Hey y'all, it's Kay. Let's grab a few materials and we'll make a swag for the fireplace that will look great for Christmas, but if this isn't your color scheme, maybe you would prefer it in January for snow. I'm going to be using some of these wooden snowflakes that I got from the Dollar Tree. The smaller ones come in a pack of eight and the larger ones come four hanging on some twine. I'm going to use one strand of Christmas lights. This set came from Walmart and it was about $2.47 for 50 lights. I'm going to be using several different ribbons for the black and white and burlap color, starting with these two. I will also be using this burlap one and this snowflake one. I'm going to use this burlap ribbon plus some burlap fabric that I cut into strips. I will also need some jute twine some Waverly chalk paint in the color white, some white iridescent glitter that I got from Walmart, this jute rope that I got from the Dollar Tree, some zip ties, a lot of them, and also some Mod Podge and my hot glue gun. First thing I'm going to do is paint all of my snowflakes in my white Waverly chalk paint. I did paint all four of my big ones here, but I'm only going to use three of them in the end, and I also used four of the smaller ones. But I placed them all on this wax paper, and I just laid them out and pounded in the paint so that it wasn't so difficult to get in between all those little nooks and crannies. And once everything had dried for the first coat and the first side, I flipped them over onto the other side on a new piece of wax paper, and then I painted that side as well. And once everything is nice and dry, I'm going to come in with some Mod Podge and apply it just to the front side of all of my snowflakes that I'm using. And then I'm going to coat them with the glitter. Now, if you don't want this glitter to get in your carpet the rest of the season, what you want to do is come in with a top coat of like a spray sealant and seal in all this glitter. I'm going to make a four inch loop on each end of my ribbon. Just fold it over. I'm going to use a zip tie to secure it. I'll pull it down nice and tight, cut off that excess. And then I'm coming in with some jute twine and I'm going to cover up the zip tie so that everything is nice and neat. The in-between measurement of my rope is about six feet for my particular mantle. You need to size yours to your mantle. 
The next thing I did was just fold my rope in half and use this old black chenille stem and twist it around the middle so that I always know where my middle is. Then I start folding it in half from the middle to the end and I place a small chenille stem. I do the same thing on the left and then fold it again. And so I'm getting four pieces that are equal on the right and the left. And then I go in and fold in between all of the green chenille stems and I place a pink chenille stem. So I'm going to have like 16 equally divided places on my rope. Y'all know that I'm very particular about my measurements and I get upset with myself if they're off. So I just go this extra step to make sure I have it symmetrical. And here are my lights and you can tell I did basically the same thing. I folded it in half, placed a black chenille stem, and then I started folding it and folding it and putting in red chenille stems. Now I'm just going to match up my chenille stems on my rope to the ones on my lights. And then I just go in and use zip ties and I'll attach it down in those spots. And yes, my lights are a lot longer than my rope. We're going to fix that as well. And see, I told you the truth, lots of chenille stems on this project, but I did the left side the same way I did the right because you want to start in the middle and work out to one edge and then work on the middle to the second edge. And here I am going in and I'm fixing my floppy areas in between where the green lights were longer than my rope, but that's okay. We'll just come back and we'll add more zip ties. And then we'll just come in and cut off all that excess zip ties that we don't need. And with that, our lights were attached to our rope. To construct the swag, I'm going to use burlap fabric. I'm going to use burlap ribbon. I'm going to use ribbons that are in check patterns, the black and the taupe color. I'm going to use some black and white. I'm going to use some that I don't even show me cutting here. But all of the pieces that I do cut will be 14 inches long. The fabric strips that I cut, by the way, they're around an inch to an inch and a half wide. I didn't really measure. I just kind of cut them haphazardly. But everything is 14 inches long. For all the items I did cut, I cut about eight pieces to start. And that took me just a little bit over halfway through this swag. To attach the ribbon and fabric to my swag, I'm going to fold it in half and you have a loop at the top and then you'll just pull your tails down through that loop. And I just do this haphazardly as I work my way across. I make sure I cover up most of the bulbs but not the actual bulb itself and I cover up all of the zip ties as I work my way down. This is very time consuming. I'm not going to show you, but a small section where I use most of the colors. This is a project you might want to start several days before you need it and then come back to it as you rest in between. But it definitely makes a statement piece for my mantle. But if you don't like these colors, just change this to whatever colors you like for your home decor. I'm actually going to be using this piece in January after I take down my Christmas decorations. I hate when everything looks so bare and empty in January. So I will have a head start on decorating my mantle. And here you can see it with the lights on. I can't wait to get this finished. Now to place on those snowflakes. I place one big snowflake right in the middle of my piece, tie it on the back, use a little hot glue to secure it. And then I place one halfway between the end and the middle. Another big snowflake. I do that to the left and the right. So three total big snowflakes. And then once I get those three on and secured, I'm going to go in between them and at each end with the smaller snowflakes. We'll place those down, tie them in the back. And with that, this project is complete. Hey y'all, it's Kay. For this project, I'm going to be making a very simple Christmas ornament to go on the tree using one of these small wooden bead rings that I got at Hobby Lobby in a package of four. And you know me, I only bought them when they were 50% off. I'm going to be using some Waverly chalk paint in the colors white and ink, some one and a half inch wired ribbon that I got at Hobby Lobby in the Christmas section, one of these miniature snowflakes that I got in the section at Hobby Lobby where they have the miniature Christmas tree and ornaments. 
one of these tiny snowflakes that I also got in a package at Hobby Lobby, and finally my hot glue gun. So the first thing you want to do is deconstruct the item. You need some really small pliers of some sort, minor jewelry pliers, and I just pried that open. And at the end, I decided I would make a loop in each end because it already had one loop, and I just made the other end a loop as well, and you'll see why at the end. Then I'm going to take off 10 of the beads, and I'm going to place five of them on a skewer and paint them in the white Waverly chalk paint. And then I'll place the skewer down in that styrofoam cube and let it dry. Then I'm going to come in with my black Waverly chalk paint and paint five on a skewer and then place it down into the styrofoam and let it dry as well. And then once all of my beads are dry, I'm going to restring them onto the wire ring. I'm going to use a natural and then a black and then a white until we complete the end. Then I take floral wire and place it through the loops at each end so that I can tighten everything back up. And once I get those two pieces of floral wire on, I just twist them around the middle until everything is nice and tight. The next thing we need to do is make a hanger for the ornament. I'm just using some jute twine and I'm going to do a slip knot around the middle, pull it up to the top and tie a knot at the top and then we'll cut off the excess. I'm going to fashion a very simple bow with my one and a half inch ribbon. I'll just pinch it there in the middle after folding it over, use a piece of jute twine in the middle, twist it around, tie it on the back, use a little glue to secure it and cut off the excess. Then we'll cut off that ribbon dovetail those ends and shape our bow just a little bit. I'm going to take our snowflake ornament, which looks like it's been rusted in the weather, and fasten it around the center just using some glue. And then we'll take a little snowflake that's white and place it right in the center to hide the jute. And then I'll just glue on our bow to the top. And with that, this project is complete. Do you like to create with paper? Create beautiful journals, cards, embellishments, and interactive mini albums? Well, you should go and check out our channel, Crafting Cousins Create. There, we slow down the videos and give you step-by-step -step instructions that make it easy for everyone from the beginning to the advanced crafter to follow along. There will be a link to that channel in the description box below. We hope that you'll come over and join us. Hey y'all, it's Kay. I had a special request to do a burlap wreath. So I'm going to use this wreath form that I got at the Dollar Tree. Three rolls of this burlap ribbon. It is five and a half inches wide and I got it at Hobby Lobby. Some black and white ribbon, some chenille stems, zip ties, my wire cutters, and some scissors. The first thing you want to do is take the mesh into your hand and you want to kind of bunch it up into a little hoof. And then I'm going to come in through the middle, right beside one of the cross posts. And then I flip out the end and I'm going to attach it right there to that center post using a zip tie. This wreath does not require setting up with a lot of chenille stems. And then I'll just use my wire cutters and cut off the excess. For this wreath, we're going to go in and make poofs first in that middle section. That's that poof we started with. And then we'll move over to the first section. So you have to think of this wreath as having section one on the inter side, and then section two being in the middle, and then section three being the outer side. So we're going to come back in, go under the wreath, come up into the first section. And you want to keep your poofs about the same size, but it really isn't going to matter too much if you get off a little bit. And now we'll go back to the middle section. That's what I'm showing you there. I'm going to keep that burlap in a column, pull it back through that second section. And then I'm holding them in my hand to keep them pushed down and tight. And now we'll go again, keep it in a column. 
and then push it through the third section. Keeping them about the same size and pulling them down. Now let's go in and we'll work our way back across. Back to the second section. Keep it in a column. Push up through there and pull it tight. And now we go back in to that first section once again. So we're working our way section one, section two, section three, back to section two, back to section one, and so forth. So you work your way across each section and then back, going under each time. So I'm pulling that burlap ribbon up through each section. No chenille stems to hold it together. It's going to stay together just by being wrapped. Now I'm going to speed it up just a bit so you can see that I'm still working my way across. And I want you to see when I get to the crossbar that I simply just cross under and keep going. But you want to make sure you have enough poofs before each cross piece that everything holds in place. And now that I'm coming to that crossbar, I'm just going to cross over to my next place and always go back and fluff, making sure your poofs look as nice as that you can get them. And now I'm starting on the next side and I'm going to speed this up even more. This is the same process that will work all around the wreath. Each roll of burlap seem to only cover two sections of this six section wreath form. And so when I get to the end at that sec second section, I'm going to use a zip tie and tie that off again. For the last two thirds of this wreath, I'm going to speed it up quite quickly so I don't keep you all day. And if you want to know how to make each section, go back and rewatch that first part because I'm going to do it the exact same way and just work my way around the wreath starting in the middle, over to the inner ring, and then back to the edge and back in. Now let's make a simple bow to go on this wreath. I'm just going to use the one color, this two and a half inch black and white check ribbon. I'm going to make about an eight inch tail. I'm going to put two four inch loops on each side, twisting it in my holder as I go so that the right side is always out. And then I'm going to make one loop that is about two and a half inches on each side and then an extra loop right there in the middle that will cover our chenille stem when we put this all together. And now let's dovetail our end, fluff our bow, and it's ready to put on the wreath. We could attach the bow at the bottom or the side, but I decided I would place it on the top this time. I'm going to work the chenille stems down through the burlap and then twist it around our wreath form. And then I also used it to be my hanger at the back at the same time. And now our wreath is ready to go and it's hanging on my closet door. I really love this one because it's simple yet rustic. Hey y'all, it's Kay. Today our challenge from Kristen Kay was to use glass from the Dollar Tree. So I'm going to use three frames. I'm going to use an eight by 10, a five by seven, and also a three and a half by five. I'm going to use some of this laminated burlap that I got at Michael's. Some ribbon, 
a pair of these black fuzzy socks that I got from the Dollar Tree. Two different sized snowflakes. Some white chalk paint and also just a little bit of black chalk paint. A few of these jumbo wood sticks. Some leftover pieces of foam board and a piece of some jute twine and a pom-pom. And finally, one of these carrots from the Dollar Tree and a few buttons from my stash. The first thing I'm going to do is take off the back and take out the glass in each of my frames. I'm going to save all of that because we will be reusing it. And now I'm going to go in and give all three of my frames a good coat of this white chalk paint. It will take two coats to give really good coverage. And I'm going to take my laminated burlap and lay it out. And on the back, I'm going to trace the back of each of my frames, just using a pen. And then I'm going to come back and cut it out. And that's the smaller one. And so let's start assembling our frames. Put the glass back in, put in the burlap, and then I'm going to put the backs back on, and then put in the little tacks at the side that holds it all together. And I very simply did that for all three frames. And now I'm going to start assembling my project. I'm going to take my medium frame and put some hot glue on top and then attach it to the larger frame, the eight by 10. And then I'll take some of those wooden sticks and glue them on the back as well to give additional support, even placing one towards the side. And then I'm taking the smaller frame, the three and a half by five, and I'm going to glue it on top as well and I took one of my wooden sticks and I cut off the rounded edges so it would fit nicely. And there it is, the beginning of our snowman. I'm going to take this little ornament that I had on a tag and I'm going to paint it with the white chalk paint. And I'm taking my buttons and I'm going to give them a good coat of black chalk paint. They were not the color I needed. And now I'm taking those socks that I got from the Dollar Tree. And I cut out a pattern, first of all, to make a little beanie hat to go right on top. Some people call it a boggin. You can call it a lot of different things, but a winter hat. And I traced it out onto some foam board. And then I'm cutting that out with my Zacto knife. This is going to be the hat for the snowman. And I'm taking one of my black socks and I'm just going to pull it right down on top of the form I cut out. And then I'm flipping it back up. And then come in with some hot glue here at the bottom and cover it up all the foam board. And then glue a little pom-pom on top. And there we have a winter hat. And then I'm taking that ornament and I'm going to glue it right on the corner for further decoration. And this is a little mitten that I drew out and I'm going to cut out my pattern first of all. And now I'm tracing it onto my foam board so that our snowman will have mitten hands. And don't worry, we're going to offer this to you as a free printable so you can have the hands and also the hat. Just look in the description box below so that you can download your pattern. And now let's cover our mitten. I'm going to use the second sock and just cut off the bottom part, the toe end. And then I'm just fitting it down to my mitten, placing some glue around the top and the sides, pulling my sock tightly across the foam board. I just keep working my way around it till I have it covered nicely. This type of sock is very forgiving. And before
before I finish, I'm going to go ahead and put my jute twine there and then cover up the pattern. And now you have an idea of what it's going to look like. So let's assemble our snowman. I'm cutting the shank off the back of these buttons. And I'm fitting my hat, deciding that I want it to go kind of at an angle at the side. And I just marked it with my pencil so I knew where to put my hot glue. And then we'll just glue that right down to the frame. And then I'm taking my buttons and I'm going to do the same thing. Those will be his eyes. I'm going to cut the green off my carrot and I sort of flattened it with my fingers on the back side so that it would stay nicely on the frame. And then I'm using some twine, the cheap Dollar Tree twine, and I'm going to put it through the holes of the buttons to make them look like they're sewn on. I just thought that gave it a nice effect. I actually decided at the last minute to do that. And now I'm going to glue them to my frame. Right to the glass. And now let's wrap around our mittens. And I'll just glue them there where the two frames meet. We'll give him a scar from that ribbon I showed you earlier. And I'll take that last snowflake and I'm going to glue it right there on his scarf. And there he is. And now he's standing up on my work table. Oh, I just love him so much. I have to find the perfect spot to put him. Thank you so much for watching today. If you saw something you liked, we hope you'll give us a big thumbs up. Leave us a comment and let us know what you think and if you have any suggestions. We just love hearing from y'all and it really does help our channel grow. We are also over on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, and Pinterest and would love it if you would click the link below and join us over there as well. If you enjoyed this episode, check out these videos for even more DIY inspiration. Bye, y'all.